Welcome to the Everything Board Games Podcast. We've got the scoop on the latest board game news, reviews, and interviews. So gather your family and friends and get ready for a board game good time. Plus, don't forget to check out our sister site for the best board game giveaways, thegiveawaygeek.com. Ready, board gamers? Let's get things rolling. Welcome to Everything Board Game Podcast. Today we have a treat for you. The developer of a new game coming to Kickstarter pretty soon is Nicholas, and this game is May Show or something like that. I always get it. I think I mispronounced it. But we have the developer on the line with us today on Everything Board Games. Is that right, Nicholas? Is that how you fall in line with this game? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, hi. Uh, nice to be here. And I think your pronunciation was pretty good. I think that's pretty close. Oh, good. Oh, good. Thank you so much for joining us on Everything Board Games podcast. We really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Now, before we dive into this game and everything about it, let's rewind a little bit if we could. How did you get into playing tabletop board games, Nicholas? Yeah, so um, as a as a child, I, I really enjoyed games. I played a little bit of Magic when I was a fairly young child, maybe like seven-ish, eight. Uh, I liked board games. And then when I was 11, I sort of got really passionate about it through uh, tabletop RPGs. I grew up in Sweden. And there was a big sort of role-playing boom in that time. This must have been uh, very late 90s, probably 99, where I picked up the first uh, my first RPG book, which was Draker of the Mourner, which is sort of the, I, I guess, sort of spin-off from Dungeons and Dragons, but had a little bit of a different system, but also your sort of a typical um, fantasy stuff, but with a, a, bit, a bit of a sort of a Norse mythology twist to it. And so... Um, my friends and I, we started playing that a lot. And then at some point, we also did a little bit of board gaming and a sort of a mix of, of both. And um, that sort of what got the, the ball rolling of actually being interested in, uh, in tabletop gaming. Awesome. And what are you playing these days? So I still play some RPGs. Uh, now, with uh, during, during Corona, we've been doing um, some online RPGs. I, I play some Mutant Year Zero. I, I GM that. I play a lot of board games. Um, I also play some... Uh, I picked up Magic again uh, three years ago, so I play a lot of Magic the Gathering, mostly online now. Um, but as far as board games go, I tend to like the things I... I guess some call it a merry trash. <laughs> well, let's say thematic games, but the, the, the type of things where, you know, you'll have dice rolling, there will be some variants, there might be, you know, a high-level player interaction, uh, sort of the... The fantasy flight uh, line of gaming I tend to be what what I uh, uh, what I'm drawn towards. Okay, awesome. And then somehow you got dove into developing games and whatnot. Yeah, so I, I w- came on um, just as a playtester for Dragon Dawn Production in I believe 2017. Probably should have checked those days beforehand, but it was during the the uh, Traitor Guard expansion which was, I, I believe, the the first expansion to be kickstarted separately by Dragon Dawn Production for uh, what I believe is the most famous title, uh, Perdition's Mouth, Abyssal Rift, which is a sort of Euro-inspired dungeon crawler. And um, during that, I, I did a lot of playtesting, gave a lot of feedback. At some point, the designer said, well, this is uh, you know pretty interesting. Could you maybe work on a scenario or something? And then I also did some scenarios on my own later on and was very active, especially during the revised edition, because uh, there were a lot of new content coming uh, at that point. The game, so I did a lot of I did the so-called scenario pack, which was sort of a mini campaign for beginners. I did a lot of development and play testing for a lot of the scenarios in that campaign, uh, and so that's how I sort of got into that. Then I did a little bit of small things next to that. I, I worked on a two-player variant for a card game called The Winning. Uh, which also came out a little bit after that and then have been sort of involved in many other games, just just giving feedback, play testing, and sometimes doing some maybe light development. But this is now my first title that I am sort of the lead developer on and I take the, a larger responsibility on. Well, there you go. So are you doing development and designing games full-time then? Uh, I do not. I do it as a part-time job. I am otherwise a music teacher. Oh, cool. I mean, the teacher, awesome. Well, that's cool that you're able to dive into the hobby a little bit more. Now, word on the street is you guys are about to launch a new game on Kickstarter called Michelle. How do you, 
Um, what can you tell us about this game? Yeah, so that's what I was alluding to earlier when I said this is my first game when I'm lead developer. So Meishao is a um, a one to two uh, card game, uh, one to two player card game. It um, is uh, is cooperative. If you play two player, obviously uh, cooperative as well when you played solo. Um, and uh, it's uh, based on a um, it's based on on real events that were long considered to be myths. There is this tomb of Meishao in Scotland. Um, which was uh, which was talked about in um, in the uh, Orkney uh, in the Orkney sagas, these old Viking sagas, as being a place that had been discovered by Vikings, and and these sagas had been discovered and they were known of, uh, but uh, it, it wasn't sort of it wasn't um, it was contested whether it had actually happened or not, and once they found this tomb of Maisha, they actually found. Um, sort of um, graffiti, like rune, like rune scratched into the wall, sort of Viking graffiti, telling the story of these Vikings that had actually been there. So, the way it happened is that they came, uh, they came there, and they were caught in a snowstorm. So they went to Scotland uh, to to loot, probably to find some treasure there, and then they got caught by this snowstorm, and they found themselves sort of digging their way into Marshall, into this tomb. Uh, through the roof, and they just fell down into the tomb just to find shelter. Uh, and once they found themselves in this tomb, they uh, obviously realized that they also had to get out at some point. And uh, the actual passage that uh, you were supposed to get into the tomb, normally it had uh, collapsed. So at that point, they had to start digging the way out. And this is what, what the game is depicting. So you're playing these... Um, these uh, 11th century Vikings uh, digging your way out of this uh, ancient tomb in Scotland uh, with your bare hands and uh, with whatever tools you have available to you. Okay, and is there any conflict besides not having any tools and using your hands only? Um, so there, there's not conflict in that sense that you're, you're playing against someone or so. So it's, um, as I said, it's a card game. You have a the core, the sort of core deck of cards has 36 cards. You start the game by drawing five cards. And each card has a, uh, a effect when you play it, and it has an effect when you discard it. And during your turn, you will have to play one card and discard one card. And then they, depending on what cards you have in hand, you will choose to sort of do those in a different order to sort of uh, progress yourself forward. And the goal of the game is to sort of dig yourself out of this tomb, which you then do by playing a specific card calling the Excavate card. And if you play four of those in a row sort of an uninterrupted row, then you get to remove passage tokens from the game board. And once you've removed um, X number of passage tokens, depending on your difficulty setting, you will then have escaped. Then, of course, there's a variety of other cards in there that are things like you find a treasure that distracts you, you, uh, you find a, a goose that flies into the roof that you can take to, to gain more food, you can eat that food to heal yourself, and so on and so forth. There's a, a variety of other card effects that you have to to work with to sort of uh, keep you keep yourself alive until you can find the strength to dig yourself out of the tomb. And does it end when all the thirty six cards are gone out of the deck? Or uh, correct. So you can you can either lose by running out of cards and not being able to play anymore, or you can uh, lose by uh, running out of health. Uh, both are pretty equally likely, honestly. You, there are a lot of cards that make you lose life, and you often find yourself in positions where you have cards that are very difficult to play, so you end up discarding them instead. But when discarding them, you also lose life. And so you find yourself in this constant push and pull of wanting to find a, a, a opportune moment to play these four Excavate cards in a row, but while, while those are you playing those, you're not gaining any life. So you have to have a lot of health so that you can afford discarding other cards that will likely lose you health. So there's a lot of like resource management, a lot of uh, risk management, a little bit of push your luck involved there. Okay, awesome. It sounds pretty cool. So in developing it or in being the head developer and developing it, did much change since when the designer got it to you guys? Yeah, I think so. It definitely did. So um, those who are interested can actually see it was a print and play game that's up on Board Game Geek. So we have it up as a separate posting now. It's called Maya Shop and Orkney Saga. That is the version we are now kickstarting. But before that, it was just Maya Shop. And that you can actually see on um, 
on BGG as well. And there it was a, a print and play that could be played with a normal deck of cards. And that deck then of, uh, what is it, 54 cards then has now been reduced to 36. So we have trimmed down the deck quite a bit. And I've also done uh, quite a lot of changes to the mechanics. I, I won't go in maybe t- into too much detail exactly what I changed, um, but I am I do a um, a developer blog on BGG where I go into a little bit more detail of what I of what it's uh, what I've been doing. It's called uh, a Northern Traveler. You can find a link to it in the, on both of the Maya Shop uh, BGG pages. But um, to sort of uh, you know, give you a brief overlook of what I've been doing. It's been a lot about uh, streamlining. The game uh, had could potentially be pretty long uh, in the in the early versions of it, like uh, forty five to sometimes even up to an hour, and uh, it could become a little bit of a grind, like a little bit of a repetition, because you could at that point actually go through the deck several times, and you had actions that that allow you to do that. The problem was if you ran out of action, you would then lose, but you also had the opportunity to regain these actions, which made the game sometimes uh, almost impossible to win, but not yet lost. And just to sort of, and that was one of the first things that I looked at to uh, just, just finding like very defined cut points when the game is over, where you can't continue anymore to reduce the play time and to also reduce the deck a little bit to just sort of, uh, trim things down a little bit just trim the fat and, and make it a little bit more of okay, a uh, awesome. dense uh, experience awesome it sounds pretty cool a lot of good experience that you're able to do that and it sounds like it's changed quite a bit so if per se somebody's played that one or they haven't when it comes to Michelle what makes this game pop is when my audience should go check out and if they like what they see back it on Kickstarter so what your question is what 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 is sort of the the compelling feature of it or yes sir yeah yeah um, well so I think so we have um there will be on the Kickstarter page as well we have actually a small list of sort of the, like the specific selling points that we think are worth stressing here so one I think is the the, the quick play time. So we, we put 30 minutes on the box. We've been getting some feedback from previewers now that maybe that was a little like a little bit over the top. I think it's actually rather more like a 20 minute game, maybe 15. So it has a, a very quick uh, play time. A uh, lot of replayability, partly because of how the cards come out. You will u- you will use, since you, all uh, cards are multi-use, you will use them in different ways every time you play. Plus, as I, uh, as I was speaking of earlier, there are some mini expansions and there will be three of those in the core game, uh, potentially more unlocked through stretch goals. Um, and those mini expansions you can actually shuffle in and each mini exa- ex- expansion has a potential alternate setup. So there's a variety of combinations that you can play that uh, I think is, uh, just, just creates a lot of replay value here. Uh, second, it has a very gritty theme. It's, it's a little bit more adult. You can ha- you will, it will be a little bit more, more graphic the, the, and, and realistic the look of the cards. So I think some will enjoy that, that it has a little bit of a different feel than say some other uh, card games of, of this type. Um, and uh, I think it plays really well with two players as well. So it has a, it's a very different experience playing solo. So if you play maybe some solo games, but also like to maybe play with a partner and play some, uh, some two player games, I think this is a, is a good one that will give you a lot of replayability, not only through those expansion, as I said, but also that you can play it solo and co-op and it's a distinctly different experience. Okay, so that's pretty cool. And you said uh, with the art and stuff, is it still family friendly or what age would you recommend this game to? So there's some graphic violence. There is uh, a, a goose being slaughtered on one of the cards. Um, I think I think that's from 13. Generally, that's the recommendation in the US when there's some graphic violence, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so nothing tor- too horrible. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. Now... Uh, this will be on Kickstarter running through the 21st of January through when? I think it goes for 10 days. That is uh, admittedly okay. not my my area, but I, th- I think we're going to do a 10 days or two weeks campaign. Okay, so that makes sense. That's awesome. And 
so this is awesome. So if anybody's listening, if you're listening, make sure you go ahead and check out the campaign, whether it's launched or if it's about to be launched, we'll have links in the show notes so you can find it easier. Now, mine is coming there to your hometown, Nicholas, to find out, to stalk you. How can people go about keeping up with you and everything you guys are doing over there with the games? <laughs> well, so the best way is, uh, is probably to uh, go on Twitter, uh, Dragon Dawn Production. Uh, has its own Twitter page. I'm also on Twitter under uh, Philip Ubik Dick. Uh, you can also just Google my name and you will find my uh, Twitter account, um, Nicholas Lundström Pachaka. Um, and um, other than that, we have uh, there's the Dragon Dawn Production homepage, ddpgames.com. Also, my, my developer blog is posted there. And of course, I think one of the best ways, if, especially if you want to interact with us and have like questions directly about the game and so, is to go on to Board Game Geek and find uh, my show of An Orkney Saga, which is the, the page for the, the sort of re-implementation of the game. And there, just post something in the forums. We're uh, very happy to answer any questions you might have. Okay, and if you give me those links, I can make sure I include them in the show notes so they can do that. And speaking of the things coming up, per se, somebody's listening later on down the road after the Kickstarter and everything. Is there any secrets in your back pocket of other games you guys might be working on that you can share with us? So there are some secrets, uh, which I <laughs> obviously cannot necessarily share, but I, I know we have a, there's a game on, uh, on, on politics that came out last year that, uh, that might be getting an expansion, but I, I don't think I'm allowed to say more than that. Um, we also have a Perdition's Mouth Soul Spire, which is the, the big box, uh, sort of, um, big box expansion coming for Perdition's Mouth Abyssal Rift, which we will be kickstarting hopefully in, uh, in May. I think that's pretty fixed at this point. I've been doing some development work on that one as well. I think it's, uh, it's going to be a very, um, a very fascinating dungeon crawl experience. Um, and to that, I am working on my own game called Beyond the Rift, which is a um, sort of a, a sequel story-wise to Perdition's Mouth Abyssal Rift. Um, but it's also a card game in its own right that has something that I for now call the evolving deck system, where um, each hero will have its own unique card deck of 26 cards. And of those 16 cards are tied to specific body parts of the hero. So let's say you play the, the warrior Bastian. He will have three cards in his deck that are connected to his head, three to his right arm, three to his left arm, body and legs, and so forth. Um, and um, once you equip items during the game, let's say you find a, uh, a broadsword, you equip it to your right hand. And then you remove all the cards that says right hand on them from his deck and you add in the broadsword cards uh, in its stead. So it has a, a sort of a, a very streamlined version of deck building, I guess you could say. Um, that one uh, will create a very um, very unique gameplay, I would say, for a card game. For an uh, where about game. is that in the process? Uh, it's very far ahead. I, uh, it's, uh, it's possible to, uh, to do some playtesting. We have print and play kits uh, that we, we send out to people who are interested. So anyone interested in that, uh, definitely let us know uh, either over Twitter or I will give you, um, I will give you some other contact ways in the, that we can put in the show notes. I'm not sure right now which would be the best way. But that's, that's pretty far along. We have uh, four heroes, sorry, five heroes uh, that are in some stages of development. Three are uh, have sort of finished um, printed play cards. We, there is uh, one and a half full campaigns you can play. Um, and uh, this is coming in Q3 of 2021 to Kickstarter. Okay, sounds like you guys are quite busy over there. But yeah, like uh, we don't want to keep you all night, or I guess all day where you're at. But we really appreciate you coming on Everything Board Games to talk all about Michelle with us today and also some of the other stuff you're working on, especially Beyond the Riff, Perdition's Mouth, Card Game. That sounds really cool. Yeah, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. No problem. Thanks for listening to Everything Board Games. Make sure you're subscribed to the podcast so you never miss our news, reviews, and interviews. And check out our sister site for amazing giveaways at thegiveawaygeek.com. Until then, keep on rolling.